Hi, Whiskey Jason here, back here behind all the bottles. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm going to start my series of the Bush Mills Steamboat Collection. Steamship, I'm sorry. We're going to start off with um, the number one, which was the Sherry, 2015. We're going to move over here to the Port, which was 2016. Then we're going to move over here to the Bourbon, which was number three, the 2017. And number four was the Rum. Um, I think the series is over, but I'm not really sure, to be honest, because we did not have anything here in 2019, and it is already 2020. So, um, I'm going to go against my rules. My rules say that I will only do a video in English if no one else has done a video. Now, Post from Whiskey.com has already done a video about this one, but not of the other three. So, I decided, hey, I'm going to do the whole entire series. Please forgive me. All right, so um, we are now talking about this wonderful steamship here. This was actually um, commissioned and used by Bushmills to bring whiskey to America starting in 1890. This was 2,466 tons. And unfortunately, it was actually stranded by Holly Head. When you leave um, England and go over to Ireland via the boat, you usually go to Holly Heads. And that was on the 12th of January, 1911. So about a good 20-some years they used this boat back and forth. What they would usually do is they would go over to the States, um, bring whiskey over, and then actually go back down to the Caribbean, buy some rum, and bring it back up to England and or Ireland. And <laughs> every once in a while, it says here, on the maiden journey, um, she was warmly welcomed from Philadelphia to Yokohama. And due to the fine cargo she carried and found a demand for the whiskey that would have filled a vessel twice her size. Ooh. So, um... Now, I actually thought, what Irish whiskey do I have, which I can compare this to, that has a sherry finish? And my very, very first idea was Redbreast Listel. Now, um, the problem is, this is so much better. <laughs> it blows that out of the water. It wasn't even a fair comparison. So I was like, okay, what other thing do I have? Oh, I have something actually from the Bushmills Distillery, Sextons. Um, why do I know it's a Bushmills Distillery? Because it says here... Um, County Antrim. There is only one distillery in County Antrim in Northern Ireland, Bushmills. And therefore, I can be 100% sure that this is a sherry single malt from Bushmills. Now, um, whiskey base number 78404. Over here, this is about 50-some euros. This was a travel ex a retail exclusive. This is a one-liter bottle. Now, um, some sites have said these are were um, finished or even matured, I heard one say, in first fill or Lolozo casks. I'm totally going to disagree with that. I am going to say that it was finished in Lolozo casks. Now, even on the, um, it says here, a limited release of fine malt whiskey specially matured in Ololoso sherry butts to give a unique flavor characterized by rich dried fruit, spice, tunny, and dark chocolate with a long, sweet, and smooth finish. Now, I've had a lot of whiskey in my life. So, in my German videos, I'm up to about 1,500 videos I've done already. So, 1,500 different reviews. No one else I know of in the whiskey community has done as many whiskey reviews as I have in any language. And I've had a lot of Ololoso casks in my life. And this was definitely not a first fill maturation. This was a finish, all right? So let's nose the two of them, both 40%. Mm. Now, the very, very first thing I get is a type of lactose acid, a little bit of butter type of spoiledness, which is not the thing I really want to put in my mouth. 
Now, Bushmills is a very limited, limited, it has a range and it's getting bigger. So we know the Bushmills original, maybe you've used that as a mixer. We have the Bushmills black bush and the red bush, very interesting. We have the 10 year old, excellent. We have the 16 year old, I would almost die for that. Oh, I have forgot the distillery reserve, the 12 year old, which you officially can only buy at the distillery when you go to the gift shop, by the way. Um, over 120,000 tourists a year go to the Bushmills Distillery. It's one of the top five tourist destinations of Northern Ireland, which I thought was interesting. We have the 16, as I mentioned, the 21 with a Madeira finish, and we have also a, um, a, a um, anniversary bottle with a 400th anniversary. Um, it was called 1608, and it was released in 2009, a year late, but who cares? All right, very, very good. And now we have the four different steam uh, ship collections. So it's very, very good that we now have these. The question is the quality and the value for money. This one smells better. It's got a little bit more of a honey moment and a little bit more of a, um, a dark chocolate moment. Interesting. This is young, younger. This is a no age statement as well. Who knows? Now, very, very briefly, the history of Bushmills. I'm not, okay. 1608, then Sir Thomas Phillips had received a license. It was a seven-year license um, to actually do the following, to distill and to sell the following things. Aquavit, or aquavite, ushkaba, and also aqua compostia, whatever that is. And so um, for seven years total, um, King James, you know the Bible, <laughs> gave him the permission back in 1608 to actually distill and sell. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> the distillery was actually really just built in 1784 by Hugh Anderson. So, oh well. 1860, then two businessmen from Belfast came, James McCollin and Patrick um, Kerrigan, came and bought the distillery. They turned it 20 years later into a limited, very, very nice. 1885, a fire destroyed it. 1884, a fire destroyed it. 1885, they actually rebuilt and reopened. And 1890, they bought the DSS Bushmills. So a very, very interesting boat, um, and it did a lot of good for Bushmills, made it into a massive um, global player on the whiskey market. So after that, 1920 Prohibition hit Ireland very, very hard, and Wilson Boyd, the um, chairman and CEO of Bushmills back then, had bunkered a lot of whiskey so that directly after Prohibition, they were able to flood the U.S. market with Irish whiskey. 1945, um, Isaac um, Wolfson bought Bushmills. If you go to the Wikipedia page and you look at the Isaac Wolfson, the word Bushmills does not actually appear. He owned the company and his sons actually for 30 some years. Um, Isaac Wolfson was a great businessman. He is the Warren Buffin of the 1945s of Ireland back then. And he was an Orthodox Jew. Very interesting. Now, he sold it, or better said, his son sold it in 1972 to Irish distillers. It became a conglomerate. So one single company in 1972 owned all of the Irish whiskey produced. And that lasted until John Teeling broke that monopoly in the 1990s with his new distillery, Cooley. So about 20 almost odd years, only one company produced everything in Ireland. And they totally changed the perception and the image of what Irish whiskey is. Uh, 1988, Pernod Ricard bought Irish distillers. 2005, Diageo bought then Bushmills from Pernod Ricard for 200 million pounds. And in 1914, uh, Diageo swapped then Bushmills for um, the hell, behalf of a tequila company that was owned by the Jose um, uh, Cuervo. Cuero, 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 Cuero. So, that's that, and 2016, or 2015, the end, is when this whiskey came out. So I don't think that Jose Coevo actually had anything to do with this whiskey, but rather I think Diageo planned everything, and they actually just kept on implementing that, which is an interesting concept there. All right, very good. That was a long history lesson. Let's, I think I've given this enough time in the glass.
Yes, I have. It's not a great nose. The sherry is very weak. Um, that lactose acid, that little bit of that that spoiled milk moment is here. It's not a great thing to actually call right home about. 40% is the na natural Bushmills um, ABV. Ooh. Bitter, old cast syndrome. They tried to mask it with sherry and they did not do a great job. There's a little bit of sweetness, there's a little bit of sherry in there. But if you've ever had a real sherried whiskey with Oloroso, especially in Scotch, where it turned, where just that fruity, vibrant type of walled forest berries, um, nope. And it's a tiny little bit actually um, um, peppery for its 40%, to be very, very honest. No age statement, unfortunately. Going over to Sexton's just as a direct comparison. So this hit the market just maybe two, three years ago. Nose is much better, much more honey, a little bit more fruit. That tiny bit more of chocolate is in there. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. What I like about this whiskey is that the sherry is integrated. You, I do notice a tiny little bit of a youth there. It's not the oldest whiskey of the world. It's not a Bushmill 16, of course. But the sherry is integrated. Over here, I have a little bit of a fractured moment. The sherry tries to cover up something instead of being integrated. And this is actually not a very bad whiskey. This was made for the bartenders. This was made for our hipster friends. This was made for our um, our millennials and so on with the bottle, with the design, with the... Even to look at the skeleton on this. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's not Bushmills. That's not the old grandfather of whiskey. This is hip and this is new and this is cool. And I must admit, it even tastes better. So if you have the decision between that or this, go for this. Now, if you have the decision between the Sexton and the Red Burst Listau, even though those is probably a little bit, might be 20, 25 euros or dollars more expensive, um, go for this. <laughs> this stuff is really, really good. Um, I forgot how good it was, actually. All right, so um, I'm going to give this more of a C minus value for money. I'm going to actually give it like a D plus plus. I really don't think this is worth its money at all. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, my honest personal opinion. Well, thank you very much for hanging around for the history lesson here about Bushmills. Maybe you learned something. And I will be doing a video about the port, about the rum, and about the um, bourbon cask that's coming up soon. Thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany or Europe tasting rare and exotic whiskeys, things that usually don't make it to the States or other places. And please like, subscribe, and tell others. That'd be fine. Maybe even share the video. Bye-bye.